Hello and welcome everybody who has joined early. Thank you very much for being on time. Appreciate it. Uh, we are going to be getting going at probably like a minute or two. So thank you for your patience and um, we look forward to presenting for you. So Nick, what incentive do you have for early birds today? <laughs> um, how about a joke? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, it would have been a joke in itself if you said I'm more of a late owl guy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, why don't you get off with a joke? Let's see. Um, so why didn't the astronaut have a party in space? Why didn't the astronaut have a party in space? Because they were in a... I have no idea. <laughs> he couldn't plan it. <laughs> oh, that's my can can gold bit can gold install it for the astronaut. Oh gosh. Uh, well, uh, there's my embarrassment for the day. Um, so let's get things going here. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone who is here today. Thank you very much for showing up. Um, today, we are going to be going over Bold Build. Um, we've done a few of these webinars in the past, and today we are going to be kind of going more into the construction phase of our um, application. So, um, started us off. My name is Nick. I am the sales manager here at Alpha Bold, and I'm joined by Ty Albali, who is our VP of Consulting and is the driving force behind Bold Build. And then we also have Mahmoud Tanash, our principal consultant here as well to help answer any technical questions because he is the main developer behind this. So for our agenda today, we're gonna to be going over some of the industry challenges and taking a look at how Bold Build can solve those. Uh, then we're gonna kind of take a high level look of what Bold Build is and kind of what benefits you can see when you adopt the solution. Then after that, we'll spend a good chunk of our time in the Bold Build environment showing you how a project is managed. And then uh, finally, we'll go through some questions and look at how you can get a bold build of demo for yourself. And then if you do have any questions throughout this webinar, please um, feel free to submit them in the questions box. I'll be monitoring those and we'll try to get to those throughout the webinar. Uh, one thing I did want to bring up is that we, we are doing this webinar specifically towards the construction module within the project management app. However, Bold Build does have multiple capabilities such as sales, estimation, proposal generation, scheduling, vendor management, managing submittals and RFIs. I mean, it could basically do everything in your operations end to end. So um, if you did want to check those out, we have done some previous webinars. Those links are right here and we'll send out this PowerPoint afterwards. So that way you can check them out at your convenience. Um, also, we will be doing the demo from the perspective of a general contractor. However, bold build can be configured for GCs, subcontractors, or specialty subcontractors like roofing, scaffolding, electric companies, um, you name it. Um, basically, we will be doing future webinars, kind of going into those a little bit further. So if during this webinar you see something that doesn't quite fit your needs, do not worry. We can configure those. So um, either reach out to us afterwards or tune in for later webinars and um, we'll dive into different roles as the year progresses. Uh, before we uh, kick off things, I did want to actually get a little bit of feedback from you. Um, so I'm going to launch a poll right now and see what you guys say. Uh, first, what tools are you currently using for managing your construction processes? Uh, we've listed a couple of the big guys on the screen, so let us know. So that way we can one cater this demo a little bit better to you guys, as well as cater future webinars a little bit more. All right, so we'll leave it up for a few more seconds, but it looks like actually the majority of people are saying other, which I, I was expecting a little bit more in the Procore, but Procore is coming in second. And then we do have quite a few people using Dynamics. That's great to see. All right, and two more seconds. 
All right. Thank you guys very much for your responses there. And then I do have another poll I'd like to launch. And uh, basically kind of what brought you here? What is a workflow that you're looking to improve? Um, I know we got quite a few items here and we don't have a all of the above <laughs> option, which may apply to some of you. So um, just pick out that top one that's kind of giving you guys some troubles that you think, man, if we improve this, um, it would elevate our business. Okay, so as of right now, it's looking like reporting and analytics is our top runner. Okay, then a uh, little bit of RFIs and submittals, just the construction workflows is coming in hot as well. Two more seconds. Perfect. Thank you guys for your responses there. Um, so yeah, let's jump into the next um, slide here. Tie up. <laughs> sure. I thought that was a question for them to answer. To. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, getting into it right off the bat, I want to touch on a cost of issue that I'm sure everybody is aware of here, and it is Ms. schedules. It has costed the industry $165 billion, and that is 17% of the total spending within the industry. And as you can see on the right there, it's estimated that 75% of the projects are going to be going over the original schedule date, and that leads to $75 billion spent after a scheduled completion date. Uh, we're hoping that with bold builds, you'll be able to manage your team's time more effectively and hopefully avoid costly delays like that. Uh, next slide, please. I think this is yeah, based, for... based on okay. this, the only pricing bold bid at, bold bid at 74 billion. So we get to make 10 billion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on this slide, we're going to kind of touch on like RFIs and submittals, that whole process, and essentially um, it's a struggle. As you all know, we can see here that it takes almost 10 days just to get RFIs back, and each RFI, just based on administrative and technical review, costs a little over $1,000. Um, so that's a big cost on something that shouldn't cost that much. And then the final statistic right there is um, has to deal with getting responses for RFIs and 22% of RFIs don't even get a response. Um, so shortly, we're gonna show you how you can send and receive and manage all your RFIs and submittals within Bold Build and hopefully increase those response rates and cut down on those administrative costs associated with those RFIs. So uh, let's take a look at where some other delays are happening and other costly items are. Uh, first you'll see document management is a big contributor. 50% of contractors don't capture and review the data consistently, leading to 35% of their time just hunting it down. Um, not only that, but 30% of the data is lost um, by project closeout. So what we're trying to do with Bold Build is keep all that data from start to finish in one place so you can easily just have it at your fingertips and then make smart decisions based off of that. Um, under that, you'll see just how little projects are updated in a timely manner. Bold Build is uh, cloud-based, so everything is updated in real time. And this gives you accurate representations of your project each and every day. Uh, collaboration is another area for improvement. 82% of the owners feel they need more collaboration within their contractors. And with Bold Build, you can set reminders to contact people, uh, send emails and documents right from the app. And then we've also added a vendor portal allowing your external vendors to submit information quickly and securely directly to you. And so that way it's all within this app. Um, also, Bold Build's mobile friendly, so it keeps your team in the know wherever they are. In regards to change orders, um, not many people are properly documenting those changes and it's leading to a massive amount of rework. Ultimately, it's costing the industry $31 billion a year. Our uh, system, it makes document tracking easy and tracking those change orders easy. As for labor productivity, simply just reducing double entry of data and increasing the lines of communication can have a huge impact on productivity levels of your team. Bold Build integrates with Microsoft Teams to allow for easy and effective collaboration. 
Uh, let's see here. I think we go to the next slide. Yeah, that was it there. Um, so as for, um, or at least another recent study actually shows that 40% of construction companies are using three or more apps for their operations. And the majority of those apps are not integrating with each other. And that leads to either you or someone on your team to do all that data entry manually. We want to use Bold Build to reduce the number of apps that you need and therefore reduce the amount of time doing data entry, allowing you and your employees to focus your time on more productive items. So um, let's see. I think this is about time where I hand it off to you, Taib, and we'll get into the meat of the webinar. But again, a reminder for everybody, if the, you do have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the questions box and we will try to get to them throughout the webinar. All right, Taib, take it away. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nick. Happy New Year, everyone. So I'm going to start with pain points as well, just like uh, Nick, only because uh, it's important to quantify those from the context of different apps that we have. The first one that I'll start with is the uh, sales app we have. So on the sales side, we know that we are living in this age of distraction where we feel that sellers, especially in the AEC industry, uh, they do not have the right tools. And they feel that they have way too much going on and they have to spend too much time on non-selling activities. So we want to reduce this um, sellers performance inefficiency a great deal using board build. If you go I'm forward, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do you mind if I uh, interject here? Speaking of too many tools, I'd like to post one more poll to everybody and see how many different systems your teams are actually using to execute projects. Sure. So give me one second here and yeah, let's hear from you. How many systems are your teams using at the moment or are you using to get projects done? And I mean, optimally, I'm sure everyone wants to click one, but uh, we're seeing quite a few five pluses here. Which, uh, you guys definitely need bold belt. That's what I'll tell you from here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a uh, few more seconds to collect a couple more, but it looks like uh, five plus is taking the lead here with two and then four coming in third. We'll close this up. Thank you everybody for uh, giving us your answers. Uh, thank you for letting me interrupt and um, I'll let you be. Sure, thank you so much, Nick. So here you have some non-optimal tasks uh, across the project execution. You can see that 16% almost time is spent in conflict resolution, non-optimal, dealing with mistakes and rework. And I always emphasize it's not just rework when you go on the job site and have to redo, redo something. It's also a lot of rework that you have to do from the paper uh, collaboration and communication standpoint. And then 14% just looking for project data is huge. So for those of you who are like, okay, this is like small numbers there. Uh, this is the aggregated number, which is 35% of the total construction professional time that is being spent on non-optimal activities. And it is break, uh, broken down into uh, hours per week as well for you. So you can see 5.5 hours per week on looking for data, conflict resolutions 4.7 and 3.9. But because we always have financial people making decisions for us, so we thought we would also put it in dollar terms. So you can see this by role. You can see all of these roles are um, absolutely required throughout the project execution phase, right? Uh, and some people feel, feel that, okay, C-level executives, they only need uh, data limited amount of times, but they are obviously having to connect with your project managers, getting an overview of the data, and they're more costlier as well. So here is the annual impact for you, which is significant. So what we have tried to do is, uh, build a platform that helps us uh, eliminate some of these. First, I'm going to uh, share with you what is Bold Build, and then I'll share with you how Bold Build helps us resolve some of these. And then we're going to go into the demo. I'll keep it short here it's because we have a lot to cover on the demo side. But uh, from the Bold Build uh, construction standpoint, it is a tool that is supposed to help you transform your business uh, end to end. 
It is one connected integrated platform. We are trying to eliminate silos and we have these segments, but they are all on one platform. So we have an analytics layer, we have a sales uh, application, we have a field ops, which is now part of our project management app. And then we have through integration accounting. And like Nick mentioned, today we would be focusing on just project management. We have done a lot of previous webinars for you uh, that kind of cover some of the other features, but uh, I have so much to cover just on project management. It was very difficult for us to pick and choose the new features that I'm super excited to show you. From the functional standpoint, on the sales side, we do the complete end-to-end -end buyout phase. On project management, we go from pre-construction, construction, and post-construction. Again, today we are just focusing on construction, which is the execution. So vendor and equipment and field folks come into that as well. So I'll be showing you glimpses of that as much as I can cover. And then the analytics layer that goes across all of these apps. But today I'll be showing you analytics from the context of construction phase uh, within our project management app. So based on some of our analysis, uh, how do we eliminate some of the pain points that uh, Nick highlighted and then I kind of also try to quantify them. One thing that we have nailed down is productivity. The whole platform is built on building one integrated platform that allows you to increase productivity across different teams and different business units that you have. The way we do that is we help you focus on what's important for you based on your role in the organization. We have streamlined and automated a lot of workflows and we have also aggregated data where we could and we give you and serve you the data as to how you need it to be able to do your job better. So what you would see in the demo is I'll be wearing multiple hats because we just have one hour, but we will be showing you the view for a project manager, for an estimator, for a foreman, for a guy on the field, a journeyman or an apprentice. Uh, all of them have their specific roles, but when I say all of them, I don't want you to think okay, they have their own small silos. It's one system and it's integrated and it's real time. Everything I'm showing you, I won't be able to show you a lot of different device agnostic capability. So I want you to know that everything I'll show you is uh, mobile compatible. You can use it on your browser, but you can also use it on your tablets and your cell phone. Uh, it's all integrated and it's all real time. So if as soon as your journeyman and apprentice to put in their time, your foremans can see it, your field admins can review it, your superintendents can approve it, your project managers see it on the project plan. So that is where uh, our focus has been. And there we feel that you gain benefits as we see that based on uh, some of the inefficiencies we shared, you can save up to 2.5 million, you can eliminate uh, almost 48% of the rework, which is common across the industry. You have amazing executive level insights. And then again, you have one integrated system. So you have one single source of truth. And with that, I'm going to uh, go into the demo. I want to just build the scenario for the demo, primarily because like Nick explained to you, Bold Build is a platform, one integrated platform that can be used by different personas. Uh, you could be a subspecialty contractor using Bold Build. You could be a contractor using Bold Build. You could be an owner or architect. Whatever your role is, you can leverage Bold Build because it's all about us configuring it to your needs. But for this demo, I'll be role playing as a general contractor. The name of this general contractor is Bold Build itself. And the general contractor would be working with the owner architect and the construction management firm on the external owner team side. And then they have some contractor have their own kind of pre-qualified vendors, subcontractors, suppliers. And these three are the ones that you will be leveraging in context of the demo that I'll cover. So with that, I am going to go into the demo. And like I said, we have all of these apps, but today our focus is project management which goes across pre-construction, construction, and post-construction. But within project management app as well, we're only today focusing on construction, which is project execution. So with that, I am going to uh, just go straight into the demo. Any questions for me, um, Nick, from your side? Not yet. All right, awesome. So like I was sharing with you, we have uh, multiple apps here. So you can click on the app and you can choose any app from our uh, different app platforms. We have Foreman app, Project Management app, we have the Sales app. Again, like I said, we're not gonna go into all those apps. So we are gonna start with our Project Management app. 
on the left here i have navigation i'll just make it go away i'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a second here but i'm going to start with the uh, dashboard or analytics layer that we have so you can see here i have a holistic view of all the jobs slash projects that i have ongoing in my system so i can look at them i can see how many uh, the general from the general contractor perspective this this is my team board build hours i can see any hours that i have put in against uh, change orders i have a complete detailed dailies against each one of them so for example if i say i, I am only interested in uh, say one of these projects i can go and i can just uh, quickly filter on that project and it'll just show me only that information i can also click on this nice little bar chart and it just filters information based on that I can look at the information by site, we refer to it as by phase in our uh, system as well. So you could have a project that has multiple sites and to show you all those sites, you can see site performance based on that. You can see dailies by site as well. And then you have some nice uh, visuals on comparing trades across all the projects as to how you're doing, which trades you trades you are kind of doing more work on, where you kind of not needing a lot of work, uh, you can look at hours by employee again all real time as to how their time is coming in and you can also look at hours by cost code now you also have another <clears throat> version of this uh, labor hour report where you can see apprentice versus journeyman hours you can also see ratios this is probably only relevant for some of you who work in states where there are some governing laws as to how many hours need to be by the apprentice versus the journeyman so this is one of the reports we have then to specifically measure your subcontractor performance, we have a subcontractor performance report. So here you can go in and you can see how your subcontractors are performing. So I can click on this and it's showing me my, I have a Disneyland vendor, I have a detectors vendor, how they are doing, I can see how they're doing by phase, I can look at their tasks that they are performing. Again, I can filter on these and as a filter, it kind of filters down uh, based on the selections that I make. And similar to before, I have filters here as well that I can select and could show me um, all the performance. Now, against your subcontractors, you would have TOs. And I will share this with you as we go into our demo as well, that you can generate TOs for your TOs and work orders for your subcontractors. So you can also look at their performance against the TO. So you can see the PO quantity was 45, they only consumed five. And I'll show you more and more on this, so I won't go into a lot of details here. And then we have a very nice uh, equipment report. So for the sake of this uh, demo that I'm covering with you, I'll be using uh, the project, which is UCSD is going to be my end customer. So the owner is from, is Christian at UCSD, which is Uni uh, University of California, San Diego. And Elliott Field is one of the buildings that we would be extending as part of the scenario that I'm gonna cover today. So as part of setting up for this demo, what I did was I set up a job here. So I can show you, let's say if I go in and I say, I want to look at the project, which is for UCSD that I've set up. So I can go in here and I can say, show me only this project. So it can now show you that I have three pieces of equipment that is already delivered on the site. And it tells me I have, if I go by site by phase, it's Elliot Field and it has all three and it is one drill machine, one generator, one outdoor security. Uh, lights and I can go in and I can look at the aging report and it tells me that it has been there for eight days. If I call it off, it gets called off. I can deliver it. So I can track end-to-end -end equipment. I can have it go through an approval process as well. So once I have another project starting, I can deliver it from this site because it might be closer or I can have it called off and then deliver it there. But you have a holistic view of where all your equipment is real time uh, based on the projects that you're working on. For the rest of this webinar, I'll be focusing primarily on this project and all the stages of this. So this is the project stage, which means I'm executing in the construction phase, but I'll show you the pre-construction and other aspects of this. So because we have a lot to cover, I won't be showing you a lot on the RFIs and submittal as to how we create them. What I wanna show you on that is we have this now holistic report that we added on RFIs as well. So in here, you can go in and you can quickly see a complete end-to-end -end picture of all the RFIs you have in the system. So you can see I have six open RFIs in here. I have, I can see if I have an approved RFI. As part of setting it up again, I have one approved RFI that was done in the pre-construction phase of this project for UCSD. So you can see I have it here. And where this is awesome is from right from this dashboard, if I scroll down here, you can see that I have exact information of this RFI. 
this is the actual RFI. I can click on this link and it will open it up within the bold build system. I don't have to go anywhere. Uh, these are the documents that were exchanged. So I can click on this document and it will just open up this document for me as well. So while it's opening this document, let me show you how the RFI looks like. So I come in here, you can see that this RFI was sent to Prestige Concrete. Uh, you can see I have some details here as to what question I might have asked. So it's a concrete provider. So I said, I want to make sure that the moisture level is 7% or less based on that. I can send them the documents that I want to create in our system. For those of you who have seen it in my previous webinar, it allows you to generate these documents from within this. So for example, if I open up this uh, nice little document here, you see it has its template. It can be your template. It just merges these documents. So this is your RFI. And then you can say, I want these drawings attached to it. It just creates them on the fly, which in itself is a huge efficiency productivity booster. So this is kind of how the RFIs look like. And then uh, also I have another report for the submittals, very similar to, again, um, what we have on the RFI side, but the reason I want to show you submittal separately is because I know this is very important in the industry from the compliance and regulatory perspective. But again, for this project that I'll be showing you, you can see in the pre-construction phase, I had two um, submittal requests that we generated. We were given those submittals by the uh, two vendors that we have. So if I just try to filter down on that, you will see it's just going to focus on UCSD building extension. And then it is going to filter everything down based on that. So if I scroll up here, you see it went away. It says two submittals, two of them are approved again because I have moved on from the pre-construction phase to the uh, actual project. So you can see here it's telling me that they are both in GC review, although they have been approved now. And here again, I have a link, so I can click on this just like I showed you for the RFI. It opens up. Uh, your submittal as well. And this was, for example, done with Rip City Construction, which happens to be my glass vendor. So if I go into the details, maybe uh, I will be asking them about glass specification and stuff like that. Also, on the navigation here, we have some cool uh, features where you can pin items that you go through. Let me just show you another submittal example because I want to show you transmittal history. Not only do we have our submittals, uh, I, we have maintained all the history. I have better record of history here. So you can see, I can go in here. I can see exactly when it was created, what was the role, when it was closed and revised, when it was scheduled, when it was submitted again. So we have a complete timeline. You can come to it here as well, but of course you can also come to this nice little dashboard and then you can see if something you're falling behind on and you can catch up on that. So that's kind of what I wanted to cover on the uh, analytics layer. And now I'm going to jump in to the actual meat of the demo, which is going to start from Precon, a little bit on Precon, and then I'm going to go into the exact uh, project execution phase there. Any questions for me, Nick, so far? One question, well, two questions, but you answered the transmittal history um, right then. But the second question is, are these dashboards out of the box with bold build? Absolutely. So the ones that you've seen, they're all out of the box. They're also included in our base licensing uh, for both. Perfect. All right. So on the navigation, I have this left nav, right? And I have pre-con, contract, projects, work orders. Won't go through all of this again. Uh, we don't have a lot of time today. And this way, amazing, cool feature. <laughs> I just have to show you. So I'll go in here and I will start from the UCSD project. So we're just going to dive into one project and just talk more about that project. So in here, this is again, uh, this is the pre-con, right? So I'm not still in the construction phase. Uh, I haven't started the project as well. You have seen it probably from our previous webinars as well. So I won't spend any, well, not any, but not much time on it. But you can see I have my team here. I have my stakeholders here. I have my tasks here. I will explain to you procurement and uh, the whole process of procurement. You have seen it, but I can talk about that from the project so I can skip it because everything here gets carried over to our project phase. I have subcontractors that I finalized. They're primarily three subcontractors, one for glass, one for concrete, one for cement that we'll be using. The submittals I was showing you in the dashboard, here are those two submittals that we went through. You can see both of them are approved. The RFI I was showing you, it's again here. So everything is kind of triggered from here, but on the analytics layer, you kind of see how it shows up. 
I've already shown you our awesome 3D modeler. But today, uh, before I jump into creating the project, I wanna just quickly spend a little bit more time on the amazing collaboration features we have. And the reason is because I talked to you about productivity. And I think productivity is about making sure that teams could collaborate. Better. So you can have Teams collaborations. If you're using Microsoft Teams, you can click on this button and it opens up the same thing exactly as it is if I bring it over here within your team. So for example, this is my project within Teams and I can start collaborating. I have my whole team listed in here as well. For example, if I go in and I say, okay, USD, UCSD, which is my project, I have a team in here. I can see the members of this team. I can tag them here. I can say, hey, uh, superintendent, well, and I can tag him, I can ask a question, I can attach files in here, I can upload those documents, all the documents that I upload within my teams will also show up on my uh, bold build project. So this is an amazing collaboration tool that gives you huge productivity boost and keeps everybody on the same page. In addition to that, I also have Office 365 integration. And what happens is that as I showed you the team on summary, all that team is available to you in Office 365 groups as well. Again, we covered that. So for example, you see everybody I have added to this team in my summary is here. I can start talking to them. I can start attaching documents. And then I have this huge uh, document management piece where all the documents across, across all the phases are in here. So for example, I can choose the location and say, show me documents that I have in SharePoint. So it will just show me that whole hierarchy that you have uh, which we, which can by the way we build based on your needs it's all configurable i can say show me documents that were created as part of my teams i can see that as well but again i've covered this with you in the past i won't, won't have time to go into that what i want to do now is we have kind of finalized everything and it's time to create the project and go into the contract so i'm going from pre-construction to actual construction right so as i go in here you can see that i've already created the project as well like i was showing you uh, uh, if I click on this, you will see here's my project. I have only one site for this project, which is Elliot Field. But one thing I want to show you is that this is a complete contract, a full contract. But our system allows you to do partial contracts and LNTP contracts. And this amazing feature is there, obviously, which will require its own webinar. But you can see that I can choose from my estimates, and I'll come to estimates in a second. And you can create your adjustment. So I can say out of the price of 400 that is estimated, I want to leverage here it says all 400, for example, I have an adjustment. And I can look at these adjustments too. So you can see I created this adjustment yesterday to prepare for this webinar. I could have done, I have another one of 500 here. I have another one of 1,000 here or two of 1,000. I created one first for 800 and another one for 200. And some I don't want to include because I don't have approval from the owner. So I'm going to just leave them in here where it says no adjustments. And then if I create contract, then it creates a partial contract. And then of course, uh, as it creates the partial contract, I can go in there and I can uh, make changes. And once I make additional changes, then it is going to take those partial changes and bring them into the budget. So with that, I'm going to not create a partial contract. We're just going to go ahead with the full contract and I'm going to open this contract for you. So in our system, you move from pre con to a contract and a contract can have multiple projects based on the site and it can have multiple sites as well. Keep it simple for this demo. We have one pre-con stage and that is resulting into one contract which is this UCSD building extension contract. I have only one site here, Elliot Field, and I have only one project in here. This is the project. Now it groups the uh, teams, uh, the external team and the internal team for the contract team, but it just separates them out again on the project level, which I'll show you. And then I have all the information that I had in there carried over for me. So I kind of bring in everything that was in the pre-con stage in here. Now, I want to show you the budget uh, piece in here. So you can see in uh, the system that the estimates that I have put in for uh, my project, they roll up in here. And I was debating whether I should show you this or not, but uh, I think I absolutely have to, which is that we have enhanced our estimation phase. So for example, if I go to my uh, project here, we have now a complete uh, estimation process, which is, if you remember previously, our focus was that 70% of the uh, companies out there, they're using um, uh, primarily 
Excel for their estimation. So we have one process of estimation where you can just pull in your Excel and upload that as an estimate. But now what we have is we have another uh, module within estimation that allows you to do your estimation completely within Boulder. So for example, and it's, it's cool. It's like uh, really quick because that's the biggest uh, barrier to doing it in a tool. And that's why people do Excel. But here is my estimate, for example, for this project. I have materials in here. I have, you can see I have these three materials that I estimated. I have equipment. These are three that I showed you have already been delivered because the project is already ongoing. I have my label hour, labor hours here. And if you want to add anything to it, you will see that how easy it is because we have this nice multi-select feature. And you can just go and you can select, okay, I want this, 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 and you add the quantities and you hit add. And as you do that, it automatically does the magic. It brings everything in. And in this estimation detail, it just rolls up everything. So you can see my total estimate was 5,450 for labor. So if I go back to my budget on the contract, that is exactly what you would see uh, in the labor in here. My original cost is 5,450 and then my price is 7,000. So we kind of bring in all the details from there in here. Now, what I also did as part of this was I created a change order for you already. Uh, because I wanted to show you how easy it is to do change orders. So in the budget, you see, originally I had a budget of only $120 for glasswork, which was the wrong cost code for that. But then I added $500, so it became $620. And then I added another $200 on the cost side. So this is what is represented in my change order. Doing a change order is super easy as well. I'll show you. You go in the system, uh, you create a change order, you want to send it to your... Um, Whichever vendor you want to send it to, you just come in here and you say, I want to generate my change order template. It creates it for you. It stores it in SharePoint for you. It sends it automatically. We have throughout the system integration with uh, DocuSign. So you can electronically sign all these documents. So this is, for example, a document that it just generated. So it tells me that I have an estimated change of 200 in the cost side of things for this change order. So you kind of uh, just... Uh, go ahead and do your change orders and manage all of that in here. I can quickly create a new change order. I need to know obviously the cost code against which I'm doing it. And then I can go from there. For every vendor that I select, it creates a child contract as we refer to it. So for example, I selected Prestige Concrete for my concrete as my concrete vendor, Vectel for my cement, Rip City Construction for my glass supplier. So I have three child contracts in here. Now, you must be wondering as to how we do all that communication with these vendors. So when we say, okay, I want to use you, we send them the RFP request, they kind of review that, we send them or ask them for some middles. All of that happens within Bold Build too. So Bold Build has this portal module that I have in here. Uh, so if I kind of go from here into this, I'm logged in as Whitney, which is one of my sales rep for Rip City Construction. So this is a submittal that was sent. You can see USD building extension as part of that. And you can see it's already approved. I can go in here and Whitney can see everything that comes from Bold Build. And then they can respond through a submittal document in here. And they have access to all the documents, just like we have within Bold Build. So for example, as they receive this document, you see they receive for me, okay, here is the specification, just like the RFI. If I show you this, they can see it outside our organization because like I showed you in the demo scenario, they are outside Bold Bill. They can see all of that. They can see product specification, all that, and then they can submit uh, their response to this. After that, you can create a contract from them. So all of that is handy. And as you make changes, it ought, the system automatically creates snapshots for you if you have snapshots enabled. So as you do change orders, you make changes, especially for your parcel contract, it takes care of that. So I think enough about the contract. Let's go just into our project. It is going to be rest of the demonstration for today. I'm gonna to just have this left nav go away for now. All right, so here you can see I have my first tab, which is the project tab. All the information that you saw in pre-con and uh, the contract stage is carried over. I don't have to recreate any of this. My team, my Office 365 group, my team's collaboration, everything is in there. It has my internal team. It's saying, okay, these people are working on this site because I could have multiple sites as well. You can do change orders and budget per site as well. But for now, to keep it simple, I have one contract, one project, one site. And here's my stakeholder team. So you can see 
I have name of the people here. Anthony Tan is my architect, but I can quickly see okay, which firm I'm using as the architectural firm. This is my end customer UCSD who will be the owner for this. And the guy I'm dealing with is Christian Bale. My construction manager is Mar Martin Harris and Alhambra Construction and my construction management company. And I have all these details listed in here in my teams. And I have tasks here. And I come to these tasks because now I'm a project manager, right? I'm within the project phase and I'm gonna uh, assign some tasks to different team members. I have a nice photo gallery here. So my people on the site, they can go and they can take pictures. I can see all of them. I, I like you select the site only because you can have multiple sites and there could be multiple foremen and other people who are taking those pictures. So as they take those pictures, they kind of show in here. I can see, okay, how the site looks like, it looks awesome. Um, whatever I want to do, I can do it as project manager. My budget that I showed you on um, contract level also rolls up in here. Again, it's one-to-one, -one, so it's the exact same thing that I've already covered, so I won't spend any time on it. I do want to spend some time on procurement because I skipped it in pre-con. So what happened there was that I had, based on my estimates, these materials, these equipment, uh, all these things come in. Now, we have this amazing... Uh, vendor pre-qualification app so you have your materials here what our app allows you to do is you click on this vendor pre-qualification it automatically does everything in context of your pre-con or your uh, project stage so you can do it at any level you can do it while you're in the project you figured that hey i'm short on some material and i want another vendor so you can say who is my pre-qualified cement vendor it shows you them i select that and if i hit save here it's going to add that in then uh, I can go through that whole RFP and getting a proposal. I can say, okay, show me people who can do glass work for me because my guy is off or I don't do glass work. And it tells me my Rip City construction is your, one of your glass materials vendor and they also provide glass services. Or I can say glazier services and you see they provide glazier services. So this is awesome. And you can just then select them. You just hit the save button and it just gets added to, the, to, the, um, to your material section. And then you can work with them. And as you finalize who your subcontractors are, you kind of walk them through the whole process. So you can see they are showing up here because they are all contracted, which means I had back and forth with them. They submitted a response. You can see I sent them an RFI. They sent me the RFI response. I reviewed that RFI response. And then I said, okay, I'm going to contract them. And as I contract them, this is where they show up as contracted. Um, subcontractors or vendors and all of them have access externally to this portal where they can log in, they can see the same information that I can see in both. So this is a separate view outside that they can see as well. Now, once all of this is done, um, because I've shared with you chain orders before, I won't go into that. But what you wanna do is you wanna create POs for these. So you wanna tell, for example, the city construction that, okay, I like what you guys submitted. Based on your response, I wanna generate a PO and I want you to come and provide me these services. So what we have in here is uh, I can go in and I can show you these uh, peers in here. So I have multiple peers that I have generated. And we have another app for uh, peer generation. So if I refresh it here for a second, you can see I have an app that says uh, create peer. So when I click on create peer, it shows me my contracted vendors. So it's going to show me all of them. And then it says, okay, for this vendor prestige concrete, you have selected it for concrete. What do you want to do with it? You want to uh, select which site you have selected this vendor for because you could have multiple sites and you could have one vendor based on their proximity delivering and contracted for one site and another one for another. And then you can say, what do you want to do with this concrete? Do you want it delivered in office? You want it delivered on site? Whatever you have to do here, you select that. And then you say, create purchase order. And you can specify the estimated quantity is showing up in here. You can change that but you can then specify create purchase order and it will then make an order. It sees, you see 25 here because I've already created these POs. I've created one for Prestige, one for Rip City, for Glazier services, as well as Glass Material, as well as for Bechtel person. Once you use this app, it automatically generates all that for you and you see all that information in the purchase order section here for you. And again, you have the whole tracking in here. So for example, if I go, open up one PO for you, you will be able to see that I have my purchase order line items. And the line item, it's telling me that the glass, I am uh, looking for 100 square meter. I have already received 60, I'm still pending 40. 
So it's partially easy. I'll come to this in a second as to how you kind of go about doing that. Let me go back to my project. So this is kind of uh, just a quick overview. I can see material estimated versus used versus received. So for example, I was showing you glass, right? So let's see which one is glass here. This one is glass. It's telling me that I had originally estimated 100. I ordered as part of the PO all 100. I showed you that I had received 60 and I have not used anything. For this one, it is showing you used. I'll cover this in a second here. But it kind of gives you a complete overview of how you are progressing against your POs, which helps you do your change orders then. But with that, as a PM, I'm going to come into the scheduling section. So I've shared with you in the past that our system integrates with Rike, which is one of the most commonly used like system by project managers in construction. And it is also used by Microsoft Project uh, Online. So it integrates with both of them. So if you are a Rike lover or you have your project plans in Rike or in Microsoft Project, you can integrate with them. But now what we have done is we've also added what we think is better than both of them, uh, project management tool. So it allows you to quickly add your tasks in here and kind of create your items. So you have, it's very easy to use. So for example, I go in here and I say, okay, I wanna create a new task. So I can just uh, come in here, click on uh, insert task above. So I just create the task, I can name it. Uh, I can say test task. Uh, I have here uh, different detail information on the task. So you can see, we kind of gave it more of a construction flavor. So our tasks, we said, okay, a task can be a work order, it can be a milestone, but we also said transmittal. The reason is because transmittal responses get missed. This way we can, a project manager can tra track that, okay, I have this transmittal view. And when you approve a transmittal, we are thinking we'll automatically add a transmittal approved task in the project plan. So you have, not from the scheduling perspective, but you have an oversight of that and you don't miss out on that. And that is a field type of a task. This is when your foreman says, hey, you missed this. And they create a task for you, which automatically adds up on your project plan. You call it a field task rather than just a task. So these are kind of the, some of the details that we have. I won't do anything fancy here. I'll just delete it. But you can see I've created some of my tasks. Against this, I have uh, in the construction phase site work, foundation work, and glass work. And you can see here, I have all of these assigned. So I have crews that I can define. I can define my crew members. I have one of these glass work. It is a third party contract that I was talking to you about, Rip City, a glass crew. So they are gonna take care of that. Rest everything I'm handling internally. And then I have this amazing view of a timeline that shows me all of my milestones. So everything that you see in yellow is a milestone. The things that you see in green are my work orders. So I can group my tasks. So for example, layout putting, pour and level concrete is my foundation work order. Then I have glass work work order that has windows, more window work, and I'll show you more window work. It's coming from my foreman. So my foreman looked at it and probably my task was done and he needed more hours. So you see how it says field. It tells me that my field folks created this. I did not as a project manager create this. So you see, I don't have a resource assigned here. But what happens next? So I have now done all this. What we also have is we have an app uh, for the field folk. We refer to it as a foreman app. Now, before I jump into that, the idea of that app is to create your daily so that you could track progress. Now, we have made it very simple because the PM is doing all this heavy lifting and this work and assigning these resources. So what happens is that in that project management app, they just go in and they create dailies. So I've already created a few dailies. So we started this project on I think Monday, so 11, 12, 13, you see I have some of the dailies in there. And I'm going to show you uh, here, I have the foreman app. So you see how this says foreman? So you can have different roles who have access to this. So the daily that I created yesterday is 112. So I'm gonna open this for you. And uh, we have a mobile version, but this is for the foreman, right? So I'm still not talking about the journeyman or the apprentice who are keying in the time that this spent. I'm still talking about the foreman. He comes in here, he creates the daily, he says, okay, do I want to have a work order? But he wants his team to work on the foundation work order coming in from my schedule in here. So you can see I have two tasks against this. So he used the foundation work order that was accessible to him in this um, daily. He selected that. And then what this guy did was he went in there and he said that I am going to see what tasks I have against him. And against these tasks for pour and level concrete, the foreman assigned a resource. 
and associated a PO. So it said, okay, this is UCSD queue and all of this thing. Once the foreman does that, then foreman's job is done. Then we have a separate app that I won't cover today, which is as simple as I show you a version of that. You go in here and you create the service and it is just going to allow you to say, I started my work at 9 a.m. and I finished it at 5 p.m. And once they do that, they just mark their task as complete. So that's all your uh, field folks do. So I'm going, I didn't do it for this, it was great. So I'm gonna just do it right now. So then you just do it in there. And based on that, what happens is that everything else flows right from here all the way to your project plan. So your task is gonna be marked as 100% complete because UCSD crew worked on this task that was assigned to one of the journeymen by the foreman. What I've also done in here is that the foremans, because they're on site, they receive material. So as part of this one, they have received a 10 a cubic yards of concrete out of 25. So they can see in here material estimated versus use. So you can see estimated originally based on original estimate was 25. Then against the PO, I said I ordered 25, but I've only received 10. Now, because my guy went in and they did this task, they used all 10 of those it's nicely showing me that this is what I have done so far. So this is like, if I am doing a task for my, uh, my subcontractors, but what if I am going in here and I just have a task that I assigned to my internal labor, just for example, like this one is. So I have this uh, scroll up, this clear lot was assigned to UCSD2, which is my internal team. But then what happens is that again, your, um, Journeyman comes in, they put in, they go on to the time, they say, okay, I am here, I want to uh, work on this uh, particular task, and they can just come in here and they can say, I would like Aaron who specializes in clearing lots, so I'll select him. You have everything in here, so from the cost code standpoint, I know it's labor, so I can select that, we can select their uh, trade, and then they can put in the hours. So I had three before, I'm gonna put in uh, five more, it gives me the cost that I can remove. But if I go back in here now, based on this daily, I can submit it, it can go through an approval process. I don't plan on covering right now, but if I refresh this now and come back to my uh, my schedule here, I if I complete this task, give me just one quick second. Uh, I come in here and we, what we have is we have the hours rolling up. So I haven't recalculated this. If I recalculate this and then come back in here, you will see real time, I will have an update on this uh, that my player lot has updated. So for example, this task, I think I probably didn't link them together. So just give me a quick second in here. Uh, this is what I just put in and I'm pretty sure I forgot to select the task. So if I go in here and I say, I'm working on clearing the lot. So you see how it is available to me? It's available to me because it's coming directly I didn't select the site too, so I'll add on that too. Uh, this is the one, so I save this. So it's, it's available to me because it's coming directly from here. Uh, these systems are integrated, they're interlinked. So I'm gonna just say, come here, recalculate, go back to my schedule, refresh it the third time. So you got that. Okay. This should have shown 100%, but that's kind of, it automatically shows it as you kind of do it. So let me do another one to trip topsoil. Let's see if I try to do another uh, time entry in here for strip topsoil. Let's go ahead. I say Aaron is my guy. I can choose anything in here, but I'm gonna choose labor again. I go in and I choose trade as labor again. And this time I'm gonna say eight hours, but I will choose the task as well, which is, let's see topsoil. So strip topsoil is what I chose, and I'm gonna say save and close. It's gonna take a second. Let's see if I, by the way, this what I'm doing here, you don't really have to do, but because I wanna show it to you demo in one second, I want to do it. Otherwise it automatically updates it uh, in its due time. So if I go back in here and look at my schedule, you see it now says it's 100%. So it's real time, set what's going on with the clear lot here. But that's how kind of you uh, you track everything. 
So this is kind of what I wanted to uh, cover with you today. Uh, again, in this format app, you kind of define your crews, you have a resource. There's a ton more, obviously, which we are super excited about that we have done. Uh, I can track my purchase order progress because I used concrete and all that stuff, but uh, we only have one hour here. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to you, uh, Nick, and ask you if we have any additional questions for me. So we did have a question come in and it was going back to the um, the third party like vendors and subcontractors and how they had that external portal. Does that require that they need a bold build license? No. So uh, there's a nominal fee based on the impressions, but you don't need to have the, a license for them. So what we have is we would, uh, in bold build, you would need a license for bold build, but your external parties, be it your owner, uh, if you're, they're using an architect, a construction management, they have access to all the transmittal related information. They don't need uh, access to a license for the portal as well as your subcontractors who would come in and based on like I showed you how Foreman assigns them tasks and then they use that separate app that I didn't show you, but they will be able to see that app and then put in their time and it's gonna be just a mobile app that is gonna come free with uh, project management bold build for you. So none of them would need a license. Great. Um, that, I mean, that pretty much answers the questions that came through. All right, so that I'm gonna hand it back to you, Nick. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for taking us through that. But it was a lot of information. So um, for everyone that joined today, we will be sending out the recording after this, just so you can go through it um, and review it with either just yourself or your colleagues. And if you did like what you see today, we would be happy to set up a free trial for you where you can check it out for two weeks and see how it works for you. Um, all we have to do is just hop on the phone call with you go through a couple um, quick little check items to make sure you're all set and ready to go for it and we'll get you started. And then after that two weeks is up, if you like what you see and how you're using everything, we can set up a secondary call where we map out kind of your business needs and basically transform it into bolt build for you and uh, get you set up for 2021. So, um, yeah, please feel free to contact us with if any questions that may have not got answered here. And then if you did want to set up that free trial, um, I very much for tuning in and sticking around. We really appreciate your time and uh, hopefully we can work together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. Have a great rest of your day.